Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. Uh, this one I guess you could consider it like a mail video. Anyway, I received uh, a little care package from my buddy Dustin. And he wrote me a little note. Uh, basically just saying that uh, he was working on this DS, the, uh, the pink one that I'm about to show you in a second. And he sent it along for me. He, he partially disassembled it. Uh, and he did very well organize it. I'll show you in a second what he did uh, from all the parts. So it is in pieces, but he wasn't uh, really wanting to, to go into as much pain as it looked like it was going to be uh, to fix this guy. So he sent it on to me, and he sent me also like a handful of other really cool things. Uh, he sent me a clean amp, a GBA power cleaner, a uh, universal power switch. Uh, this will definitely come in handy for um, GBAs. Their power switches tend to be not so great. And also, because it's universal, it looks like you can uh, stick it in other consoles as well. Uh, so I have a number of uh, you know, Game Boys and stuff such that the power switches are a little bit flaky. So that'll definitely get some use. And he sent me a clean power for a GBC. So yeah, thank you so much, dude. Let's uh, get into it. Now, he did send me uh, another care package, which I believe I made a video on a little while ago. And he sent me this DS, uh, and I believe I, I showed quickly kind of what was wrong with that. Um, I'll demo it real quick right now. Uh, but yeah, anyway, you can see here the, uh, the switches, the uh, GBC clean power, and I believe this is the power amp or something. Yeah, really cool, man. And this is the um, the clean power for the GBA. That's something that's definitely going to be useful. Uh, the GBA in general, the power supply situation, not so great in general from a design standpoint. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we have the uh, the DS itself, the pink one, the uh, battery door. I think, by the way, my sister has this exact color one. Uh, and all the parts are in labeled little bags. We have the stylus as well. That's really cool usually don't see the styluses very often, the first party ones, uh, if you get uh, secondhand hand uh, DSs. And he labeled all the screws by color and like where they go. That's, that's awesome, man. <laughs> there's that. There's the uh, little rubber feet on the bottom, the, the volume sw uh, slider, the hinge, or actually no, this isn't a hinge. The uh, shoulder button here, the the peg that it sits on, and the spring as well as the other one. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll demo this one real quick again in case everyone's forgotten. Uh, this one that he sent me actually works uh, with a caveat, a pretty big caveat. Look, yay, it works. The battery's almost dead, but if I tilt the screen up, up the image goes all wonky, and then I tilt it back up, it's good. Wonky, good. Yeah, so obviously it, it'll only work when held in like this exact position. So obviously it's a ribbon problem because actually the hinge is gone. There's no, uh, nothing to, to click into right there. Yeah, you can see. Oh, comes back, goes away, et cetera, et cetera. So just shut this guy off. So yeah, this would obviously need a new, uh, at least a new ribbon. I, I believe on this model, the ribbon is like hard soldered to the LCD. It's, it's bonded. So I don't think you can change just a ribbon without changing the top LCD on this guy. Uh, but I will actually take this under the microscope and we'll take a look at that ribbon to see if it's something like one of the end wires. If it's broken, I might be able to splice it. But anyway, here's a unit that we are interested in right now. And the battery on this guy, this is a light obviously, will not fit into an original DS, unfortunately. So we have the, let's sort of just sit this on here so that you can at least kind of use it. Let's see. Yeah, one thing you got to be really careful of is the power switch on these are momentary and they're these little tiny sliders and they have to be in the right orientation. Otherwise, you can snap the nub off. So when you're reinserting this, be very careful. Anyway, just grab the battery and do a quick power test on this guy. I haven't fired this guy up yet. So it does say that it uh, doesn't read DS games. So that's definitely something to go on. And what is 
Why is battery no fit? There we go. Okay, let's see if it fires up. Hinge actually works, so. Uh, got a quick power flash there, which means at the bottom screen. So here, if I turn off the lights, just in case you guys are interested, if you get a DS that flickers when you turn it on, the screen that doesn't flicker is the one that's keeping the system from booting. So I saw the top screen flicker, so that means the ribbon cable is seated properly on that. It's probably the bottom one that is not. Yeah, you can definitely see the top one flashed, the bottom one did not. So let's just quickly reseat. I just want to get this powered up and make sure that it at least boots before putting in more work. Because I'm guessing from the description, it's going to be an issue with the uh, with the card reader. Uh, yeah, I think these ones clip in. Yep. Okay, let's just re. I'm gonna reseat that ribbon for this guy, the bottom screen, real quick. Okay, so I got it reseated. All I did was I just took out the ribbon and I put it back in. So hopefully it'll boot now. Turn it on. There we go, we've got life now. Actually, the bottom screen's pretty clean. Yeah, works perfectly, it looks like, in terms of like the, the screens and the motherboard and whatnot. But he said, uh, let me just get the lights back on. But he said it does not want to read games. I'm not even going to stick a game in there because there are horror stories, I'm sure, that everyone's heard of uh, damaging games uh, with dirty contacts or if the pins are misaligned or something. But I am going to hook, um, plug this in under the microscope and actually look uh, if I can see what the damage to the, the cart is. If it's just dirty pins, then we'll give it a clean. If it is something more serious, uh, we may need to replace the actual cart reader itself. So just giving it a quick look. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I can definitely see. Uh, some of the pins towards this end are not looking very happy. They're kind of bent up and they're like diagonal, possibly touching uh, adjacent pins. So that's definitely not good. Uh, let me see if I can get this under the microscope and get a better view of it. So sorry for the jankiness. I couldn't use my good microscope because the focal distance is too close. I can't get the Game Boy underneath it at the angle that I need it to. So I brought out my tiny little desktop microscope and we tilt this up and align it. Should be able to see, yeah, right there. Let's see, where's the light? There we go. You could see those pins. They're, they're supposed to be like all these, which are nice and straight, and they just poke upwards, straight up. But those have been snagged on something uh, and pulled out. So what that means is, uh, there we go, uh, this shielding can right in here, there are four solder joints. You can see one of them there, one in each corner. We're going to need to... Um, probably desolder those to actually be able to lift up the can. I'm not going to desolder all the connections in the back. So if we're looking at it, all these connections, uh, if we wanted to remove the cart slot completely, we would do that. Uh, but I'm going to try to just lift this metal can so I can see underneath uh, from above and see if I can poke those pins straight, get them realigned. Uh, then I don't, if I can do that, then I wouldn't need to replace the entire cart slot. If I can't do that, then it looks like I will need to buy a replacement cart slot. Desolder this one or somehow get it off, uh, probably using hot air or just maybe snip it off if it's that bad of a condition. It's not even worth salvaging and uh, replace it with the new one. But uh, let's see if I can get the, uh, the shielding can off so that we can actually get a, a top down view of it instead of having to look you know, straight into the edge there. Okay, so I was pretty medieval on it. I took a pair of tin snips and I very carefully snipped around here now I got kind of close on this edge to there appears to be uh, some sort of inductor I think hopefully I didn't damage that and it looks like I did lift the pad on that unfortunately which is floating around which is not good but there we go just fell out so that's just a grounding point I don't think that would have damaged anything 
yeah, hopefully I did not damage that component. Uh, I can fire it up real quick just to make sure, but um, there's a bunch of loose parts here, which I do not like uh, leaving as is. There's this end latch piece. There's the spring, which helps eject the cart and keep it kind of retained, which is just a little spring here. And there's a slider and then another spring in the front part. And this catches the edge. There we go. Catches the edge of the cart, and that's what kind of latches it. Uh, so I'm just going to remove those so I don't lose them. And we can see exactly why it wouldn't read games. Uh, last three pins are all bent, all out of sorts, and the rest of them look just fine. Um, it does possibly look like I could save this one, though. Um, the pins haven't broken off, and as long as I'm really careful with how I bend them, I might be able to save them. So let's try to do that right now. Yeah, it looks like this got caught on something real bad and they yoinked it out. I wonder if someone inserted something besides a game into here and it got caught on the pins or maybe they were trying to clean it from the outside. Yeah, I'm going to have to do this not directly under the, the camera. I'll try to try to do this the best I can, but super fiddly and these are super thin. Give me one sec. I'm going to do this not directly underneath a camera with a camera lens two inches away and I keep bumping it. So give me one sec. Okay, so I bent them very carefully using two tools, a very fine pair of uh, like needle like tweezers and like this needle exacto Fisher brand tool. I, I don't know. This came in an exacto set and this is like a very fine sharp needle and I used this. So I use the tweezers to actually grab the end and then I use this to kind of pull up or to push or to pin the metal so that I could actually manipulate it around and bend it around the curve of the end of the needle. And this is how I've been able to get it as kind of straight as I could possibly. Uh, it's not exactly, the heights are a little bit different. It should be close enough though that I, I, um, I'm hoping I can just... Uh, insert a cart and it'll be close enough. There is a little bit of wiggle room, so to speak. I'm going to grab a cart, probably just like an R4, or some cheap cart that I don't care if it damages the pins. I'm not gonna grab like a legit game, unless if I can find a cheap game, but give me one second just to get something to test with. Okay, I grabbed an old R4 card and I don't have a memory card in here. I have no idea where I put that, but if it at least boots to the menu on this, it means it'll read any game. So I'm going to, obviously there's no lid on this, so I'm just going to have to hold the card in like this. Going to see if this will boot. Really awkwardly holding things with my hands. I might actually have to reassemble this kind of less gently. Give me a second. Holy crap, that was really annoying. So there's a tiny little pin. I'm probably never going to want to open one of these cart slots again. There's a tiny little metal, like a C. Well, it's sort of like a flat piece of metal and then two little tiny pins on the end. It has to go in to locate into that slidey bit on the side, which catches on this notch so that when you insert it, it clicks in and stays in. I dropped that and I couldn't realize why it wasn't latching and then I, I searched the floor and I found it and I reinserted that and now it works. Now it stays in and it clicks in and out just as you'd expect. Oh okay. <laughs> good. Okay anyway, let's uh, see if this will read the game now. I really hate that stupid having to set the calendar and everything all over again. Oh no card! So it is reading the game card. That's weird. When it just boots straight through, it looks like it's reading. Because that menu that says no card is the actual R4 menu. Let me grab an actual game, uh, not a valuable one, and stick it in there and see if it'll read that. Okay, I got my game case. Just grab. There we go. Golden Sun. As far as I know, not a super rare game or anything or valuable. Insert it. 
let's fire it up. Ah, Golden Sun, Dark Dawn. Let's just open a game file, make sure it does look like it's reading the game now. See if it'll load up a save. Yeah, works. Okay, so there's one last thing I actually have to do still. There's one last thing I still have to do is the, the uh, I just kind of reinserted it rather abruptly. Okay, so very last thing I need to do, I just click the shielding back on, but obviously the tabs I broke off are gone, and this is just waggling that would put undue stress on the pins. So luckily I have a little bit of um, the solder pads that I cut still extend upward, so I'm just going to add a blob of solder onto each of them. Except for I did rip off this one in the corner here. Uh, but luckily, that's it's just ground. It's redundant. There's no electrical purpose for that. So I will get these three soldered up. And I'll do that right now. And um, that should be good enough to hold the card in at least. So fire up the iron. Then after we fix this, it's just a matter of uh, screwing everything back down together. And I'm probably going to do in the future, get one of those clear cases. I've always wanted to do this. I didn't want to use my childhood uh, DS light, though. So I will get a clear case and install this into the clear case. And that should look pretty cool. Uh, one thing. Make sure I don't melt any wires. So yeah, this cart slot. I bent the pins down. They should be good to go. Um... I'm probably going to end up just sticking in R, that R4 card that I showed you earlier and uh, SD card in. I'm not going to stick retail games in this, probably not, uh, because I don't really trust those bent pins. The metal will fatigue after a while and it will snap. Uh, so long-term fix, you should just remove this entire thing and desolder back here, buy a new cart slot, replace it. I'm doing this on the cheap and I don't feel like waiting a month uh, for China to send me a new cart slot. I don't have any... Uh, in stock that I can just swap in today. So this will just be temporary. I'll just solder these and just be done with it. And if it breaks in the future, I know exactly what broke and I know how to replace it. So just going to get in here. So yeah, it looks like this side, I don't see the tab must have broken off completely. I'm going to see if I can find like a component lead just to Give it a little more structural integrity. Okay. So it's it's a bit of a shoddy job. So I have solder holding that side down, holding this side down, holding this side down, and then there's nothing in this corner because... Oops. There you go. There's nothing in this corner because I accidentally lifted that pad. There we go. So yeah, unfortunately, that's just going to be hanging there. But as long as it's not flapping in the breeze, I'm, I'm happy with that enough. Okay, let's uh, do one final test, make sure that I didn't screw anything up again. Okay, and this time I'll, I'll fire up order of the Klesia. Pretty sure it'll be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who cares? At least the touchscreen works. And it's actually pretty clean, too. Both the screens on this unit are pretty clean. Looks like it was just the cart slot. It's the only thing really wrong with this system. Turn it back on. There we go. Order of Ecclesia. Reads the cart. Come on. Oh, jeez. Title screen after title screen after title screen. And there we go. Yeah, <laughs> apparently this was my last save file, level 99. I uh, pretty much maxed everything out. Anyway, yeah, works. So yeah, if you are in need of uh, 
fixing the pins. Uh, this just shows you could you don't have to buy a new cart slot. You could totally if you, if you're dexterous enough and you have like very fine tools, you could actually bend the pins back into shape properly and enough to at least give this another few years of uh, of runtime. Like I said, you probably are best off just replacing the cart slot with a brand new one and that will have minimal risk of damaging future games or anything like that and it'll just work. But like I said, if you're in a pinch and you, you don't want to or you can't get your hands on another cart slot, um, you can definitely, as long as the pins are still there, they're not totally broken off, you can definitely uh, get them back up and running just by uh, bending them a tiny little bit. I know, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This is a really quick one. Anyway, um, the blue one that I showed at the beginning of this video, uh, we'll be doing a, another dedicated video to that. That one will probably be a more involved repair if it's not as simple as just swapping out the screen. Um, I want to try fixing it without replacing any parts. Uh, and that's pretty much, yeah, I'm choosing the harder road to go down. But it's more interesting to me, at least. Um, instead of just buying a replacement part, popping it in, and then calling it done, I want to actually try to fix that one up. Uh, with the original screen because it clearly works when you hold it at a certain angle. Yeah, I'm really wondering where the heck did I put that? <laughs> anyway, I've rambled on for long enough. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.